Welcome back to Fast Money. The SEC putting a damper on hopes that Bitcoin ETS would soon hit the market, but that's got Wall Street looking at a potential workaround for crypto investors. Bob Pisani has got the details from the NYSE. Hi, Bob. The SEC has declined to approve several ETFs recently, and now the SEC has outlined the reasons. The SEC sent a letter to two Wall Street trade groups outlining the concerns. They center on four principal issues. First is valuation. The SEC is concerned the funds may not have the information necessary to value cryptocurrencies. Second, liquidity. Funds must be able to have enough liquidity to be easily redeemable, and the SEC is not sure they will. And this is interesting. The SEC is concerned about custody. How can these funds prove they own the bitcoins when the keys are private? How would a fund intend to validate that they really own bitcoins? It's a very interesting question. Finally, the SEC is concerned that cryptocurrencies have substantially less investor protection than traditional securities markets, and there's correspondingly greater opportunities for fraud and manipulation. And that may be the most important point. But put it all together, and while the SEC has not definitively turned down Bitcoin ETFs, they have essentially set the barrier to entry so high that the answer is effectively no. But momentum behind blockchain and cryptocurrencies is so strong that investors are already looking for ways around the SEC's objections. For example, could a fund be designed that would address the SEC's concerns? If not, is there a way around the objections? For example, would an exchange traded note, an ETN, this is a debt security issued by an underwriting bank that would track the return of Bitcoin without physically owning Bitcoin, but would be banked by the bank's assets. Would that be achievable in the U.S.? We don't know. There's already Bitcoin ETNs in Europe, though. So we don't have the answers to these questions. I'll be at the Inside ETF conference in Florida on Monday, and you can bet that will be one of the hot topics. Back to you, Melissa. I'm sure. Thanks so much, Bob Pisani at the NYSE. I mean, you can take a look at that glass half full, but you can also take a look at glass half, uh, excuse me, glass half empty, but you can also take a look at the opposite way because they're basically giving you a roadmap. They're giving ETF, people who want to issue ETFs, a roadmap to getting that across the finish line, right? By, right. by outlining all the questions and the objections. 100%. And they're going to get there. It's only a matter of time. I think the biggest issue right now is the custody issue. I mean, that's the biggest issue because that's going to prevent the institutional buyers to come in, uh, players to come into that market in a way that's significant. When they can get around that custody issue, the ETFs, ETNs get, get issued, ETFs in particular, and the institutional buyer comes into the market in a fierce way. I, th I think an ETN is, is a much easier way for these guys to do it. Again, it's going to be referenced against spot prices, but it's going to be ultimately based upon the bank's credit. And mm -hmm. I would guess that with any of these underlying banks, um, you're going to be comfortable with that credit. But it's a lot more efficient for these guys to trade that than to be loading up on some of these tokens, which right now probably don't have liquidity. Question is I think it will bank, keep the market bank in gives check. you that? Look, JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon is outspoken about Bitcoin. He's but he never, reeled that back. He reeled, but he reeled, reeled that back. back. And well, I thought immediately no that's because we're gearing up but, for a product. We're talking about, I think Maybe, we're talking about right. custody banks, too. I think we're talking, you know, a U.S. Yeah. bank core. Right. I mean, it's yeah. going to be an extremely yeah. lucrative business. They're going to figure out a way around this. They're going to, to your point, they gave them a roadmap on how to do it. It's going to be extremely worthwhile and profitable. They'll figure it out. In the meantime, in the meantime, nice pop in Square today. Yeah, exactly. So Square, I play it with Square. The, remember the two constituents that were in the blockchain ETF mm -hmm. uh, were Square and uh, OSTK. So both of those had reasons why they popped. That's the way I play Bitcoin right now. I think the bad news for traders, in my opinion, is this rollout of an ETN or an ETF could tamper volatility. That's bad news for people that are trading this thing. Right. It's probably good news, though, for people in general that are not as Price fond as a volatility. For stability, maybe. For stability, maybe. Stability. Just pointing right. that out. Still ahead, four chairs in reverse this week, down nearly 10%. It's worst week in more than two years, but something's in the charts. That could mean that the worst is over. We will explain. I'm Melissa Lee. You're watching Fast Money on CNBC First and Business Worldwide. In the meantime, here's what else is coming up on Fast. But for better or worse, the crown has landed on my head. But Netflix reign might be over. One trader thinks earnings may dethrone the streaming king. He'll explain why he's so worried. Plus... You want to know why I pulled you over? Littering. <laughs> Officer, that, that's...